Welcome to another episode of Inspiration and uh, get ready to be a billionaire. And today it's uh, another talk, today really about money. My guest, Nikola, we met, I don't know, was it uh, last century or was it uh, 20 years ago? Uh, you visited me then uh, also in Gibraltar, my penthouse. We were in Bournemouth, where you're located to, together and talking a lot about real estates and making money with real estates. But in between, your your life changed. You, you still have to do something with real estate, but you're also now an owner of a company who is really um, at the edge of what we call it uh, artificial intelligence. And, and the world is changing. So I'd like to talk with you today about um, how is the transition, why you went there, and what you see in the world coming and disrupting of AI, where the world is going, how to create wealth, or what we need to prepare for. So give our uh, viewer uh, yeah, benefits to prepare and really maybe harvest something good. Thank you for being here. Welcome, Nick Carly. Yeah, thanks for having me, Wolfgang. And yeah, it makes me feel old when you say it was the last century, but I think it might have been um, when we first met in Gibraltar. And as you say, we were we were involved. I was with my business partner Steve at the time, and we were involved in in real estate property in the UK. And we were we were buying our own property and then helping other people build property portfolios and and manage those properties and and through a, a property investment franchise, which is still going. To, to this day, um, I moved on from that business probably about five years after our meeting um, and went my own way into, into property. I've, I've been investing in property since I was 19 and um, really love that space, particularly in the UK. And it's a great way to, to make solid, sustainable wealth. Um, it's not really a get rich quick scheme as such. It's a no, it's, it's a never, get it's it's never is really a quick thing. When what, what comes quick goes quick, huh? uh, if yeah. you're not really learning and adjusting it. Uh, what, what is why you say, especially UK, because you live there, or what is the specialty? Yeah, I mean, location of where you live is is important. We did we did do some um, investing overseas, but that just comes with additional hassle and risks, you know, the cultural differences, the legal differences, the currency fluctuations. Yeah. Uh, and the UK, you know, fundamentally, we have a, a fundamental shortage of housing in the UK, which is always going to drive the supply and demand curve in the right way for investors. So, you know, there's there's lots of narrative around whether that should be the case, whether whether landlords and property investors are good or bad for the economy, but the reality is that you know landlords in residential provide a great service to people that need to rent homes that want to rent homes because not everyone wants to or can indeed afford to to, to buy their own properties. So um, fundamental economic principle of supply and demand plays out really well in the UK for property because there's just a, a, a shortage, tiny little island, massive density lots of immigration, net immigration. So, and, and you know, we're up against restrictive planning laws, challenges with building. Um, so the restrictions on that supply mean that the demand is generally high for, for investors. So I've always loved property as, as something fixed and tangible and, um, you know, from a wealth creation point of view, I didn't really set out for it to be that for me. I was, you know, when I first started investing, I was, I was in that space as a quantity surveyor. But the the idea of building a, a portfolio for wealth creation didn't didn't massively appeal to me. Although my father, who worked a you know working class job all of his life and and retired with a pension that wasn't really what was expected and and I do remember thinking that if if back in the mm. the early days of his starting his job and paying into that pension if he just bought one other house and rented it out that would have probably outperformed his his entire pension so mm. there was that going on at the time as well yeah very interesting um <clears throat> I guess also when we are younger uh, at least in my case and uh, 
or when we met, it was more, a lot more about making money, not creating wealth, really, uh, just on all the long term. And now, now you you said, okay, some people can't afford to buy. Um, how do you see it uh, now with younger generations? Uh, they say all these millennials say they don't want to be really uh, the owner of something and stuck there. So for them, it's maybe also part of the life philosophy to rent more. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I sometimes challenge that that narrative because I think fundamentally, you know, one of the basic human needs is security, and that comes from ownership of a property. Accepting that some people may not want to um, put down roots and, and own property, but um, it's really tough for for first time buyers and, and young people. Um, but I do believe that, um, you know, the market finds its level and it finds a way and, and um, there should be opportunities for people to, to get on and get on the property ladder. Um, you know, my first property that I bought was, was £27,500 and it was, the, it was the cheapest house on the street and it's, what I could, it's just what I could afford at the time. So I bought that. I would have loved to have bought a hundred thousand pound house, but I couldn't. So I started with what I what I could, and and kind of worked my way up there. I think there's sometimes a a desire, natural desire, to want to um, jump beyond where where we currently are. And um, you know, these things do take time. Properties a slow business. You know, by contrast, the AI business that we're involved in is is super quick, and things are changing daily almost to the hour but property is slow and 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 methodical and um and it doesn't appeal to everyone but mm. if 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 you just bought one property every year which which as an investor doesn't sound like a lot you know um that that would that would result in a in a fairly solid wealth creation strategy just one every year um, which most people can do in their spare time, subject to you know, there's lots of strategies to how to get into that. Mm. So yeah, but but for young people, um, and not just young people, I think when we talk about first time buyers, my understanding is that that age level is is going up. You know, mm. the average age of a first time buyer. I don't know the official figures for that, but my understanding is that that is increasing quite significantly and has done over the past years just with cost of living and interest rates going and, and the property prices increasing. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot of people that believe that, that there's a correction coming. I don't think that would be a bad thing. As I said, I think the market naturally finds its own level and corrects along the way. It's, it's the fundamental principles of economics. Yeah. Just like to, is it, uh, when you said the one, one a, a year, isn't there the big difference between what we call value investing? Like Buffett had very few stocks he picked and, and made billions with it, but really understanding that. And the day trader is easily in, in the gambling part and, and winning and losing. <clears throat> so building the portfolio right on the long term, you normally always win. Yeah, it's 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 a get rich slowly strategy. Yeah. But Doesn't yeah, no, but compound course. interest it starts very slow, but then it goes up. Yeah. Uh, and another question to the U UK or the preference for UK. Um, you know, um, we, you know, we met in Gibraltar, but I'm German. I grew up in Germany. And when we talk there about mortgages, um, you only get a mortgage. Uh, really always uh, focus on your personal possibilities of paying the interest or whatever. Uh, in in the US and, and in the UK, there is a different mortgage type also that you really can have these, um, <clears throat> what do you call it, buy to, to, to lend or whatever um, mortgage that is more focused on on the property itself and not just only on the person. So um, yes. is, is it changed or couldn't younger people just start with that as well? Yeah, there's 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 um, there's specific buy to let mortgages which are um, you know that over the over the past twenty years there's it's fair to say that that 
legislation, both from government and the lenders, has, has not been favourable to, to, to landlords and property investors. It's become harder to borrow money. Um, and whilst there are the, the fundamental buy-to-let mortgages do look at the property as an investment, mm -hmm. most also want to see some coverage from a personal point of view as well, so from personal income. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, that's not such a bad thing. Again, it, 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 yeah. it, may, it makes for that's a more... Evident, yeah. Yeah, it makes for a more solid investment strategy. Yeah. The challenge in the UK is we you know we 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 have a a very vibrant um education like get rich quick education mm -hmm. um, industry if you want to call it that um and you know courses that say well you can get you can get rich very slowly and steadily just don't sell of course you know it's yeah. all about yeah. quick Hold um, is rich, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, I, I, I fundamentally believe in in property, particularly for for longer term wealth creation and pension provision. I think it 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 just outperforms most other, if not all, other investment strategies. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something tangible at the end of this that that can be passed on through mm -hmm. generations. Is it general um, an, an age topic we're just talking about? I was the oldest, like I, I had a mortgage in, in Gibraltar and when I left Gibraltar, now I'm living in Switzerland. Uh, and then uh, the bank um, called me, now I need to uh, pay everything back because I didn't realize it in the beginning. Um, it's only allowed until the age of 70. Um, so I turned 70 and... Ah, Surprisingly, okay, uh, I sold it, was not a big problem, made some money, but um, is there a limitation also in the age um, area that you can, okay, until you can, so use it early enough, because maybe it might be late? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit out of touch with specific lenders, but generally the, the, there is an age limit on, on mortgages. I think that age limit has gradually crept up because people are working longer people are living longer and um you know fundamentally the banks their business is lending money so they want to lend money mm -hmm. uh, so i think the the age has has moved um and different lenders have different different criteria for sure yeah but you look at 70 wolfgang I Oh, 72, yes, uh, yeah, this way. But it, you know, chronological age is not really so important. The biological, the mental, and, and so on is so much more important um, yeah. to do. And I'm just starting also new businesses, so it keeps me young. And like we know, uh, modern science says the body is made 220, 250 years. It's just the way of our lifestyle that we kill us before. And all the problems I face, physical problems today, I can really say it's because I misused something and didn't understand or treat my body right. Uh, but there's a lot of things you can really, really change. And I just had a, a session before here, uh, a Cogno movement, and I said, wow, it's amazing what you can unblock and give the body the self-healing possibilities. What I really recommend also in, in, in the relation to investment, because I saw over the years that the personal trauma, blockages, uh, programming um, is a lot deciding if you can grow into wealth. Is it really okay or, or you're not allowed to be wealthy? There's wow. a lot of psychological or even neurological topics um, which decide if you can move in into uh, abundance or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our own internal programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking about. You said now just with real estate going uh, in different countries, different cultures, different law situations, and so on. And um, now you started something. I would say is a totally new, is a different pass um, with the um, company, which I simply could would say as an internet based uh, topic, and there are not the borders. There's, 
do you face there also the different cultures on the globe or is this so much more easier uh, working global? Yeah, so the, the, the current business um, is an AI business. We, we, the, the name is Olivia AI Network. Olivia comes from, um, um, it was self-named actually. So we built some AI, the very first AI model that we built for a client um, and the clients were testing it out. And one of their people said, oh, um, you know, what's, what's your name to the AI? And she immediately came back and, and said, my name's Olivia. And so um, the rest is history, as it say, as, as they say. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, we, we, we work globally with clients in America, um, in Indonesia, in um, Dubai and Bali and, of course, the UK. And um, the fundamentally... Um, AI allows that to be uh, to be possible. You know, the AI that we've built can speak any language. It can be responding in any language. We can train it on the nuances of of a particular business or a, a particular culture. We can give it a brain that that helps it understand what its goal is. And so, um, we are now operating on a on a on a global scale and. You know, reaching out and meeting people, and um, it's so much easier. And you know, COVID was a was a tough time for me. We've not really touched on that, but I was in property through COVID and 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 lost the business as a result of that. It was a, a hotel and hospitality business, which mm -hmm. uh, which just basically hit a brick wall when the when the UK shut down. But what it did is it you know COVID allowed and and made. Um, meetings like you and I are doing, you know, just the norm, whereas Zoom meetings and Google team meetings and Microsoft team meetings and Google meetings were, were probably one in 10 of the meetings that I did before, whereas now it's probably nine out of 10. And so we can quite easily meet um, online. It's, it speeds things up. I was on, on a call this morning with a, a client of ours in Canada, and he was about to to go to bed as I was just waking up. So, yeah. Uh, mm. But it's it's just it's taken away so much of the friction of doing business, and then um, the AI itself that 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 world is just moving so quick. I think it's it's part of the reason why some people find it scary um, because the speed of change and the speed at which these things are moving is is beyond what most people are used to. You know, we've never seen a rate of change like this. Mm. Um, and I, it I wonder when we talk about the speed of change, um, there was a time in the UK, someone invented a steam machine and, and everybody was afraid about it. <clears throat> what those people at that time felt about the speed of change, because they were going slow, and the steam machine must be, boah, what a different speed and, and, and working and everything. Um, is this really a big difference now with the speed? Or it's just always coming down to the fear of, of the change that we as a, as a person can't adopt? Yeah, I think it's probably both. That, you know, the, the speed of which this tech is moving is 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 insane like even in the short time that i've been involved with this and i'm not a, i'm not a tech person or a developer but when we first started building these um these models so one of our products is a is an online chat function which is ai based and we can put it on any website and it can um it instantly learns about a business we give it a goal and a and a, and a persona um and um, when we first built these, probably a year ago, it would take us a week to build it. But what we've now done, what the developers have done, that you know, the geniuses that I work with, they they have different AI agents building parts of it, and so we can we can essentially get one of these things built and up and running in in probably about twenty minutes. So we've gone from needing a week to build one of these things to having it live on someone's website within the hour. Um, and, you know, the latest models that are being brought out by 
uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, Microsoft. Um, you know, the 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 advancements that they're making are just are, are so quick, and I don't think we've really seen um, the full force of that yet. Um, so I think there. It is really interesting. I, I totally believe that it goes fast and that, that we are just in the beginning of something. But I just um, also question myself, um, um, what is this because he's disrupting thinking? It becomes also more normal. Uh, if you go back to real estate, how do you uh, build a house? One brick, yeah, yeah it's just your background's bricks. Um, <laughs> That was a normal way. And how long did it take to build a house? Uh, but then someone decided, oh, why do, we should do it with bricks. We can do it with concrete, just prepare everything and just put it together. And instead of months, it's a week. So we have this everywhere. If we look at the car industry, yes, you could say the Tesla uh, Gigafactory has a lot of artificial intelligence robots and but there's always the the driving force, and as a German, as I'm I'm really upset how our uh, German car industry is lazy in thinking disrupting, uh, but pre protecting the old model. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a combination that we, it's a Silicon Valley or wherever it's like, biohacking everywhere. We are now more there. Hey, how can we disrupt? How we can we go? Faster with that. I think. I think for me, with just just speaking as a business owner, entrepreneur, you know, the the, the fundamental principles of, of business and commerce are to you know um, sell more product and and drive down the costs. And and AI does both of those, oh. and it, it does it immensely powerfully. So. As an example, we work with um, we work with um, DPD. They're a large parcel delivery global. They do about one point five billion in the UK, um, and we're able to um, reach out to mm -hmm. tens of thousands of their prospects from a sales point of view and qualify them so that their salespeople are not are not having to do the bulk of the work in essentially what is cold calling or qualifying the prospect. Mm. Mm. So the AI does this at scale and then puts on the desk of the salespeople hot prospects rather than, well, hot leads rather than just a whole bunch of prospects. Um, and, and you know, we've been able to build that for, for not huge amounts of money because as the tech advances and as you've got this competition between Google and OpenAI and, and Microsoft and some of the other big players, you know, the cost of this tech is being driven down all of the time. So it's making it more accessible. Um, and even for small SMEs businesses, small medium businesses, it's it's accessible now. You know, you can have chat GPT on your phone. A lot of people don't pay for that. And it's not the only model, but you know, the model that you pay. 20 bucks for 20 20 dollars a month for is just insanely powerful and it you know that can that can do the work when used correctly of probably a dozen people mm -hmm. uh, so i can use these tools you know we're a relatively small team um as a business but if we without the the power of ai we would be four times the size to do the same yeah. Yeah. level of work so mm -hmm. i think there's a fear in that as well and it's you know there's no way of getting around the fact that ai is going to replace some jobs it's going to replace some industries um but we're in this phase at the moment where where businesses and people that are using ai will certainly replace businesses and people that are not it, it fundamentally cannot not do that because mm -hmm. I can get done four to five times the workload of what I could do a year ago by using these tools. So it's making us more efficient. I'm not, I'm not saying that's all a good thing because there's downsides to it, of course, but fundamentally I can get more done for less money. And that's, that's a fundamental principle of business. I think that's in general really good. Uh, but we have another um, 
I mean, it's a problem that we are not really seeing ourselves as a society, as a big family. So it would be always good if we have this progress. But um, as long we are not really um, solving the problems for humanity, just for the single company, um, we will always create a lot of uh, losers. And uh, it's just a question of time. Like I said, ChatGPT, everybody has access as a free version or just a $25 or whatever. Everybody could use it. And if you just say, take the parcel company, how you see the future when all parcel companies really get it, get used to it? Um, isn't it like this is just more at the moment also really use it first? to ch change your behavior, get a bigger market share, and then the others can't keep up on, on the long run, even if they have access to everything. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you could really say the same about the internet, right? You yeah. know, every business on the planet probably uses the internet, has access to it, but there's, there's smart ways to use it, there's not so smart ways to use it, there's ways to leverage it, there's ways to... So AI is just a tool, and what we see with businesses is they, at the moment, as much as there's a lot of talk about it, and, I, and I'm tuned into it because it's my day-to-day -day life, but there's still quite a lot of businesses that are not using AI. They're, they fall into generally one of two categories. They, they're so scared of what it could do or don't know where to start that they don't start or haven't started, or they've they've learned a little bit about it and they're trying to get AI to do every single thing for them and they're just getting tangled up in it. Mm -hmm. We see AI as, as, a, as a team member and, um, you know, in our own business, we've, we've probably got 100 AI agents in our business doing very specific tasks mm -hmm. for our business and then we, we can deploy those into other people's businesses. So when we mm -hmm. employ in inverted commas, an AI agent, we give it a very specific task. We don't say, right, your role is to answer the phone and respond to these emails and create blogs for our social media accounts and do X, X, X. We, we give each AI agent a specific task and then you can just, you can test it and train it because it, it, it's not perfect and it does make mistakes and you know chat gpt and those large language models will tell lies to you they'll give you the answers with such certainty that you believe that they're okay but in some cases they're not so it needs training and educating and deploying in a measured way but once you've got the ai agent to respond to all your mm -hmm. social media posts you can then move to a different ai agent that can you know respond to inbound inquiries on the sales point of view so um it's super powerful but i'd encourage anyone listening that's that's intrigued is just to look where your wastage is look where your pain points are and they'll almost you know look at sales because you know my view sales fixes everything there's 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 very few problems in most businesses that more sales cannot fix so look at those areas and and look at how you can deploy ai to to start there um and that's that's really a good place to start don't try and ai your entire business overnight it's just it's just going to be too overwhelming because you still need to do the business of doing business yeah this is a, this is a question of responsibility you can't uh, give the responsibility for your business uh, to ai um, no. and so far simply and for my if it's a tool you can scale with it, but yeah. if you are not as a human being really understood the business and, and make really the real script for the business, then you can't do what you just shared, give this task specifically. Or some say already, no, AI is so intelligent that it creates your business. Yeah, I mean, there's there's examples of people, you know, single person businesses doing millions using the le le leverage power of AI. Um, so anything that's repetitive, AI can probably do. Anything that um, that happens regularly and often, probably the same as as, as what's repetitive. Mm -hmm. But 
you know AI can do because once it's trained, it never forgets. Doesn't have a, yeah. a day off. Yeah, have time off. You know, is is global, so it can be on twenty four seven. Speak most languages, if not all of them. Um, and so it's just it's such an immense, powerful tool. It, I feel like we're at the start of when the internet was created. But AI is, you know, a thousand times more powerful than than the internet. Yeah. Like, and, and, <clears throat> and if I walked into a business and said, "Right, okay, you're not allowed to use the internet in your business," most businesses would just would just fail almost instantly, or they wouldn't be able to trade. AI is going to be like that, and it's it's coming very quickly. And um, you know, for most for for a lot of businesses, it's already here, and they're using it, and they're starting to. To see advantages from that. So, so now you're touching on a, a, a glimpse of how the world is changing. The business world is changing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's things like you know the world's getting smaller. You know, it's so much easier to reach out to businesses on the other side of the planet, to customers on the other side of the planet. Um, you know, we've got so many tools now to be able to do that and facilitate business. It's no longer um, a local, you know, we're a relatively small company on the south coast of England, you know, doing business in Canada and the States and, um, as I say, Indonesia and, and, and places like that, just as easily as if, as if our customer was around the corner. Um, and you know there is some advantage to meeting face to face. I'm you know I'm 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 still a a fan of that. But you know the idea of getting on a plane to go and meet the client in Dubai that we have, you know it's it's four days out of my time. It's you know five thousand pounds to get there, and I can I can do this. Um, Using tools like LinkedIn and Zoom and and some of the AI tools, so it's just the world of business is getting smaller. The world itself is getting smaller from a communication point of view, and we're just we're overrun with tools to facilitate that. Um, not just AI tools, but just just generally, um, and that's been a pattern for some years, I think. Without uh, uh, wanting to go too much in politics, but uh, just recently also. Uh, in the UK, you see there is a lot of violence, and, and we're talking now. Oh, there are single people making a huge amount of money. On the other hand, um, what is it in the UK? Um, already fifth generation living in in welfare or in poverty, um, and 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 so on. And um, why we have the violence? Is it just an ideology thing? Um, how can politics keep up with the change um how you s see this maybe especially in the uk but uh, around the world what what will happen also because of the change in the business yeah i mean it's it's i think that's a really complex topic and it's a, it's really sad what's happening in the uk but further afield as well i think i think there are something like 60 global elections in 2024 um You know, including what's happening in the states at the moment. So the world is is definitely on a fundamental change. I think um, politics is one thing. I think there's 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 you know there's some meaningful problems that businesses can help to solve. And um, you know, in terms of providing um, jobs and purpose and 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 wealth to 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 people, that's. That's a fundamental role of businesses. Um, I try and stay out of politics too much because it's it is complex and. But and how I, do you see now, now this uh, kind of uh, contradiction um, that uh, it says okay, how we can make as a business uh, or the business owner says everything cheaper, less people, more AI, but the role of business is also to employ people to help them. Um, or to help them grow, mm. where is the this come together? Yeah, it's a challenge. You know, it's a real challenge. You know, there's there's talk of universal basic income, which I'm not a massive fan of. Mm. Uh, you know, fundamentally, I think I think AI, as much as it's going to um, 
lead to job losses in certain areas and 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 I think some sectors are going to disappear completely um it's also going to create massive jobs and massive opportunities and whole industries and that's just that's just been fundamentally how history has has happened oh. you know if you look at any sector you look at farming you know a combine harvester can do the work of hundreds of people that used to work the land and um you know printing used to be you know since the printing press and um you know so i think the scary part for some people with ai is just as i said at the start this speed of change so we have to i think as a as a society work out what's important and and stay on course try and stay on course with um with those values and beliefs you know fundamentally people need jobs they need purpose they need they need wealth you know wealth is a is a um means different things to different people but they need money to to um to feed families and and enjoy life that's that's a fundamental basic human need and um so yes we're we're going to use the 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 tech that's available to make business efficient um but we'll still grow and we'll still employ people and we'll still create opportunities and 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 we'll still spend that money in the economy in in ways that in other businesses that employ people so i'm i'm truly a believer that the future is super good golden uh, or say we will experience this century uh, wealth for people we can't even think of imagine of. and for me it's all about, I'm, i'm i don't have really the data and like the stress of the change on the fast um if that is really true on the surface for sure but as a kid i come on, on the planet earth and every day is something new oh can we play today this can we play any of this so we are not trained to repeat every day but no. now we become the industrial age and we are promised oh you know, now you have your nine to five job da, 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 da. so we created an illusion And the government created an illusion with, with pensions and everything will stay um, that we have a hard time now to really change our programming um, and uh, not enjoy the change. Yeah, I think I think politics and governments are, are challenging. Obviously, you know, in the UK, we, we have a, a government that lasts five years. And, you know, if I think about that as a as a as a long-term strategy it's it's quite <laughs> difficult because yeah. like how can you run a country for for five years you know we, we, we've just had a change of government and and the pattern's the same it always is the same when when a new government comes into power they spend the first year or so telling everyone how bad it was from the previous government you know maybe year two and three they start to do some good but years four and five they've probably got an eye on what's going to win votes not not necessarily what's 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 needed it's what's it's what's going to win the next term and that's i think that's just a fundamentally broken system that yeah uh, it's it's so short termism you know, yeah the intention the intention is changing yeah? so it's more than my survival my power game and everything Uh, and focus on but it's the same in the business world also if you have the classical old economy company on the stock market so every quarter every quarter i need to have things and the, the contract with the ceo is if you drive the stocks or whatever <clears throat> and, yeah, and short-term goals lead to short-term <laughs> decisions you know that's whereas yeah. you know i i um I spent quite a bit of time in Dubai recently and and Dubai isn't without its faults but you know they have a 100 year vision for that city and 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 they know where they're going and if you look at a place like Dubai over the last 50 years it's you know their 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 strategy is clear from you know 50 years ago it was it was basically a a desert you know it's still in the desert of course but the city has just it's grown in a magnificent way in lots of ways because because of that 100 100 year vision um whereas we have a we have a short term vision in in the UK 
thing from oh, then, you're, then you're lucky I, I would say as a german we have no vision uh, just protecting what is uh, and, and we're talking about national depths and everything what it was really once even as angela merkel was a uh, chancellor said, what if there would be no that what would we do then mm -hmm. nobody knows where the country should go there's no vision for <clears throat> yeah punish this person or this or that or how do we handle <clears throat> um people coming from an outside but there's no vision of a country yeah i think there is a role for for businesses to play in that you know, yes yeah just have a responsibility to politicians and governments i think i think we have to as business owners do do our bit and and um you know do what we can to solve some of these problems and you know i know some amazing businesses that have taken up challenges yeah, yeah. That, that really should be should be fixed by governments but should be is not generally going to happen so they, they can't it's not possible so there's one uh, we just started with the billionaire spirit idea here because uh, politicians who don't have really the billionaire spirit they yeah. can't handle the billions they can't help solve the billion uh, problems <clears throat> and uh, i even go there okay we need kind of um, rules for a country maybe but it's more about values um, do we really need political parties? Isn't it really more important that we have good companies, uh, entrepreneurs, really working on solving problems? Um, and I never really see politicians working on the problems for the humans. Otherwise, you couldn't have so many poor people in a country. Uh, if it's America, is it UK, is it Germany? We have now nearly like five million kids in poverty but nobody's really ta taking care of them how to bring them in their power and creativity so i think we need private ideas um, or a private entrepreneurship so much more yeah yeah i think i think business can contribute oh. to, to some of those problems so i think you know that there, there's there's obviously good and bad in, in all governments oh, yes. and, duality um, level is both yeah yeah, there are there are genuine, you know, I, I know some of um some of my friends are, are from government and they, they have a genuine desire to want to make a positive change and but it always feels like when I'm talking to, you know, I met I met one of them last week and um he's just exited um government um and and you know feels freer because because of the the fewer restrictions on decision making, you know, the decision making process in business is generally way, way quicker. Yeah. You, know, you see something that needs to be changed and and you can generally change it. Whereas governments, policies, procedures, red tape, it's just slower. And that that's not to say they can't make a difference. It's just slower. It's just um Yeah, and sorry. how you are influenced, know where you get your information and like a like we uh, as an entrepreneur we are not only um, faster so we are also more willing to make mistakes because we learn by mistakes yeah and if you have a whole system to avoid mistakes you can't learn you're slow don't learn yeah and we, we need to have yeah the self-esteem and says hey let's go to the edge um <clears throat> and then we resolve if we make a mistake it's yeah. a totally different way of thinking yeah, it's very rare that you 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 hear a, a, a someone in um, political status say, "Oh, yeah, we got that wrong, but we know how we're going to fix it." Or even, yeah, the other party have got a good point there, and we think what they're doing is is good. It's it's all about this jockeying for position, mm -hmm. actually, at the expense of of. Of, of what they actually need to do you've then got the media of course that, that, that is them. one big thing also yeah yeah they write so, you up and write you down and then yeah. fake news and everything and, and then not working uh really on uh, solving the problems for humanity is yes, yeah yeah but the the dull and boring day-to-day -day, um sustainable policies don't sell newspapers or you know, so I'm sure there's huge tons of 
amazing work being done there that just doesn't see the light of day because it doesn't it doesn't make the news that's not to say it's not happening so i think we 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 can um you know we can't be naive to the to the influence that the media has and in sensationalizing these things nick we both uh, believe that the future is bright and at least everybody can create a bright future what is uh, what is a kind of advice for you, uh, would you give if it's young people now to the viewers say okay prepare like this change this in belief system start learning that and and do this <clears throat> yeah i think i mean the the i've got kids with with a blended family with four kids between us and and you know my son just finished his his gcse's and my you know my advice to him is is to is to learn the um the more rounded skills of of sales and marketing and communication and conflict resolution and all those kind of things things that are generally not not taught in school um you know the school system is a whole other topic that we could go in a rabbit hole on uh, and I don't, I don't suggest we do but um you know and find something that you 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 love and enjoy and and you know don't be afraid to make mistakes i think generally the younger generation now from what i see is is less worried about making mistakes but there's just an overwhelming amount of information and and advice and and content and and mediums to keep up with it's mm -hmm. uh, you know even from when i was a kid you know I, I, my mom's still around less so and you know from from her generation to mine but from mine to to my sons is just insanely exponential so um yeah do do those things like learn learn the skills the transferable skills um would be you know, would be and is my advice to um to my kids oh that sounds good because we are also um talking about let's simple find what is your true self your purpose uh and the more you're clear who you really are like it's say it's spiritual why you're here on planet earth what you want to accomplish but and when you look back in the end when you say oh then that's why i have a happy life uh, then you're not so overwhelmed with all the information i just today uh <clears throat> wrote someone about what i felt it's not really focused and need to look here and look there look at the olympics at the moment uh in, in paris at the big stadium and there's a lot of at the same time a lot of uh, different uh, sport types going on if there's running is a jumping or whatever um, and if you focus on all the sports of what's possible yeah. you will not win and those who want to win the gold medal doesn't matter which noise is around they need to focus at the moment and and if you have the gold medal yes okay then you can look what else is there going to really be clear what you do and, and go for it and not uh, and so like what like you say the course of your ship should be decided by the north stars and not by the lights of other ships uh, around yeah. you mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's easy it's certainly easy to be distracted in this yeah. in this in this information age if we're, yes. if we're calling that um, yeah, when you said all these these uh, they kind of human like a, a conflict solving and everything specialties i believe also what is your take on it that for the future we call it artificial intelligence we can discuss it is this really intelligence or just repeating uh, some stuff um but what will be the difference for the humans and uh, if the robots take so many work away I think that is what we need to learn and be better at. Yeah, that's. I mean, I think that's the big fundamental question with AI is where it's where it's going to, um, you know, where it's going to leave um, jobs and commerce and and um, human purpose really. And it's, you know, there's quite a few debates raging about that now. It's. And I think the truth is no one really knows, you know, it's it's hard to think about where AI will be a year from now. But, you know, 100 years from now, it's virtually impossible to 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 think about where that might be and 
and how that human um you know purpose and and existence is going to look it's it's virtually impossible um but i'm an optimist and and i do believe that that you know we'll find a way to to use this tech for the good of humanity i think i think that's fundamentally um the the the, the role of of us as a species with with this incredible powerful tech that we've been given um and i've seen i've seen you know i've seen plenty of um debates suggesting that it's it's potentially not as powerful as as we first thought so um who knows i i, I don't think i don't think we've i don't think we've really fully understood what's been um what's been let out of the the bottle as it were yet and yeah. you know somewhere yeah. right now there'll be some some young kid in a basement in his bedroom developing something that is going to take the world by storm for sure yeah not yeah, and for sure it will not change really the what he called the universal laws. I'm not sure if it changes gravity and so on. Um, <clears throat> but it will change the world. But we always have to decide, are we victims um, with this or are we using it? And it doesn't matter if it's money, if it whatever. It's always, can we stay with ourselves and the creativity and then use it for the best? So it's a lot of about all the, the values. Um, um, yeah, that's uh, maybe a nice uh, way to end here this session also. That we are optimists um, in this way. We believe that we have the capacity and on the level of duality where a problem is must be the solution. So it's a question where we focus on. And <clears throat> what you're providing with your company is a lot of um, yeah, there's problem solving there and, and selective process that you says you have then the better leads saves so much uh, also life quality time not wasting your lifetime um, yes. so the best way to reach you uh, if someone want to profit from your know-how from your technology yeah the, the so the website is olivia network.ai you can find me on LinkedIn, um, and and the contact details are probably through the website is the best thing. So Olivia Network AI. Super. <clears throat> Thank you for today, Nick. And uh, <clears throat> um, I guess I will be curious watching what is, and we will discuss also uh, for our purpose uh, program what we could use maybe <clears throat> from but Olivia. Yeah, thank you for having me, Wolfgang. It's great to um, great to connect with you and the listeners. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. <laughs>